Hello there, this is Chaos Nova. So today, we're going to be talking about Open Emu, which in a funny coincidence recently, with the new year coming, it turns out that when I was thinking of making an episode for Open Emu, the emulator platform, they just released a new update, version 2.4, before I could even finish making this episode, so I decided to go along with the plan that I had, and you can even look at the ending stream from my previous one on Elder Scrolls Oblivion, to feature Open Emu in the next episode, because I was figuring, you know, what can we do with it since it won't update? It's going to die out because it won't update, and we'll, you know, do the obsolescence, but apparently it updated <laughs> right with convenient timing to when I was making a new episode, so instead of doing what I was going to do, I'm going to go and just simply make an episode about Open Emu. The update, make an episode about the... <laughs> and how what works from it, and how it works, it, how it all goes. So I made some shorts about it when I made the discovery, because those are easy to make, and Let's get started. Let's start talking about Open Emu. So, Open Emu is a multi system emulator which emulates various game systems uh, arcade, Nintendo, NES, Sega Genesis. Now, before I start this out, I'm going to put a disclaimer here own the game that you're emulating. Okay? That's the rule, and I just have to get this disclaimer out of the way. Own the game. And that's the rule I go by when I do my emulation. And emulation is cool because you can often get higher performance and more interesting graphics settings than the original system. Um, I can run N64 and using these custom graphics settings on Open Emu, I can <laughs> get a better display. I can even record in 4K if I want to. But the thing is, have fun and go by the rules. Well, let's get that out of the way. So to begin, Open Emu has been a multi-system emulator. Um, it was supposedly doomed to obsolescence due to the last Emu last update. So last system update for Open Emu was in late 2021. And now we're in New Year's 2024 with the big surprise that they updated Open Emu. So what does it mean? Either this is a final goodbye from the Open Emu community, or they've generally revived updating. Or maybe they just took a long time to update because they were busy with something. I don't know. But it's great to see that they have come forward with an update, and it feels great to get started, get chugging, and get working with this. So we're going to go get started, and I'm going to show you how Open Emu works. And I like Open Emu a great deal because it is a graphical user interface. Um, RetroArch is good too. Um, you just have to be, really be familiar as a uh, as a type of DOS nerd to use it because it is a command line interface for RetroArch. Uh, but overall, Open Emu is still good for the time being, as an emulator for a Mac OS user. So with Open Emu, um, you can see there's this huge variety of systems and we are going to get started. So before we show you how to take care of controller input on Open Emu, we're going to go and get get the bad news out of the way. That's how I always do it. I take care of the bad news first. So, bad news here is that there has been some functionality lost um, for some of these systems. So, one of the, there's a few that I can list here that don't work quite work so well anymore. Those include Final Fantasy VII, if you're using the PS1 emulation platform includes Mario 64 on the Nintendo 64 using Mufid 64 platform and I'm going to be checking other systems but these are the games that you know, I 
like to play a lot of, so I noticed immediately that they don't function uh, so well. But uh, most of the games that which I own and I also emulate, because remember, you should own the games you emulate, work pretty well. But this is the one big decrease in functionality I've noticed. So here, that I've gotten the bad news out of the way, we're going to go into getting a controller working on OpenEMU. Um, so this part should be pretty fun. Um, it's It can be confusing, but when I show you how this works, it gets a lot easier. All right. Now getting started is pretty easy. The first you ha thing you have to do is open up the app, OpenEMU. And now you have to go and make sure you have it set up for your controller. So in order to do this, you have to go to your settings. So go up to settings and you'll find the controller in the settings part. So you see all this one, in this case, it's N64. Now go to the settings. Now we go to all right. So here we're going to go to controller. Now we make sure that the controller is the system we're looking at. So here we have Sony PlayStation. So we pick that one, and now we get the drop down menu with whatever controller. The controller can be either plugged in by USB or it can be Bluetooth, such as PS1. It's either PS4 controller known as DualShock. I really recommend it for emulation. Um, the um, Bluetooth connection works on both PC and Mac. It's great. And you can use the controls on the PS4 DualShock controller on just about any game system on OpenEMU. So we're going to start the uh, PlayStation emulation. And the next section I'm going to do is going to be showing how to get the PS1 BIOS. So I'm going to have a link in the description as to how to get these BIOS files. And it should be good. Now, one feature that's changed with the update is you have to go to the drop down menu for loading or saving states in this game with this emulator. That's a change I'm not very happy with, but it happens. And this is right here Spire of the Dragon for PS1. Loading BIOS is incredibly easy, thanks to the graphical user interface. So now we just have to do a click and drag the BIOS files right into the window for OpenEMU. And maybe there's a check mark you have to check off. So go ahead and click off the check boxes and hit apply. And those BIOS will just be added. See, so easy. Um, that's why we like this multi-system emulator because it makes things very simple. Adding ROMs is incredibly easy as well, thanks to the graphical user interface of OpenEMU. Take a look, you have the ROMs files. It's just a click and drag right into the window and they will be added automatically unless there's issues with the files. So we, now you can find more of these how-to videos from myself, Chaos Nova, by just choosing the hashtag of Chaos Tutorials very easy. I look forward to seeing how I can help you understand how to get things done. I really want to help and I really want to share my knowledge. So check out the hashtag. And now that we have the ROMs added, I'm going to do one of the ROMs that we have added. I'm going to boot up Super Mario All-Stars. Full screen and it's starting. All right, so with the graphic universe, we're going to talk about modifying and deleting ROM. So first you go to the ROM and you have a drop down menu. So you can 
can go and see where it is on your computer. That's easy. And that way, if you only want to transfer the complete ROM, that's how you do it. Now, the other part is if you want to say, what if you want to rename or delete it? Well, that's also in the same drop down menu from clicking on the ROM. Um, there's cover artwork, try that. And here's the delete game. Deleting the game will take everything about that ROM and put it in your trash folder, okay? So if you are gonna make a decision, it should better be final, because uh, <laughs> it is a deletion. Um, okay, it goes into the trash, that's it. Unless you wanna retrieve it from your trash folder. So there it is, I deleted it for that demonstration. Now that we're done, I just hope you have a wonderful time. Um, Open Image just has begun updating again, so I hope you have a wonderful time, and I look forward to more videos with you explaining how to do various tasks. Thank you very much, be safe out there, and I'll be signing off. Hi everyone. Kiel's number here, and I just want to show a basic, some basics on my channel here. Um, I've got some recommended channels. This is introduction. I have an, a nice introduction for those who are visiting my channel homepage for the first time to explain the ins and outs. I have a couple of uh, extra places here on my channel. I have my merchandise store for you to check it out. I'm just updating it. So it's just some fun merchandise t-shirts, shoes, cups, <laughs> mouse pads, t f cell phone stickers, coffee mugs, etc. Nice little place. Also, something for showcasing episodes is you can reach me on my Facebook page. Send me a Facebook message and include Let's say, let's just say uh, showcase contributions and have a link of that video um, when you do. Follow me on Facebook too. I've got some nice things there. Also, I've got Instagram for just showing some jokes and memes and announcements such as Tron Aries happening and other uh, pop culture things that I view. So I recommend the Instagram page and. I also have a Rumble. Uh, my Rumble channel is mostly focused on doing hobby stuff. That, and some things are not found on YouTube, but they are found on my Rumble. So, I recommend checking out the Rumble channel. And that should conclude it. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I am going to be signing. Hi everyone. Kielsen over here, and this is the ending of the video presentation on Chaos Tutorials, and here's the deal. If you want to see more of my uh, tutorials on getting your old games to work on Mac, and you want to see more tutorials on how to do various other tasks, such as very cheap ways to make YouTube videos that still look decent, and much, much more, um, feel free to subscribe and if you want to be among the first to get each video hit the notifications and Please if you enjoy liking this your vote still counts. So please click the like With a big thumbs up. All right, you have a wonderful day and I'll be signing off